Hi guys, I'm Steve Xavar and thank you for watching my new video. Today will be episode 3, King of King's Garden. The main character of this episode is George Louis Leclerc, Comte de Buffon. He was born on September 7th of 1707 in France. But today, rather than going with the timeline, it's more about the important things that happened to him. My coach Hunan passed away at 1727. If you guys are curious why I call him as Coach Hunan, you can go check my previous videos. Voltaire, who's a French writer and wrote books that led to the French Enlightenment, he witnessed the funeral of Newton, where he saw two dupes and three earls among the pallbearers. Duke at that time for peerage is a top, while earls are the third, and he is impressed by how much the country have respect for the field of science. The funeral took place at Westminster Abbey, being one of the most no notable buildings in London, which was built in 1065. For more than 900 years, kings and queens are crowned here. Also, some f historical figures. After 100 years, another important naturalist was crowned nearby Newton at the same time. He's the most important person in the series, however, I'll go on to the story. There were rumors for Buffon in a duel and being kicked by school, where he made a secret trip to England in 1730. Then he was inspired by Newton and translated the work of calculus, and who was the person that translated the mathematical principles of natural philosophy to French? It's Madame du Châtelet, and he's Voltaire's mistress. One of the most known Voltaire's work is written for Madame de Châtelet. The work is called An Essay on Universal History, The Manners and Spirit of Nations. In 1732, Buffon and Voltaire got acquainted. Later, Buffon published his most known work of natural history, which he had worked on for more than 50 years. Of a total of 44 volumes, 36 of them came between 1749 to 1789, while the rest came after his death. And in 1739, he became the curator of Jardin de Roi, which for anyone that knows a little French can somewhat translate it to the King's Garden. Buffon upgraded to a station for his research, and now it is a National Museum of Natural History. The road on the south of the garden is called Buffon Road, and in Buffon's natural history, his description for animals is to personify them. Here's an example I took from it. The noblest conquest ever made by man over the brute creation is the reduction of the spirited and haughty animal, which shares with him the fatigue of war. and the glory of victory, he sees the danger and encounters his death with bravery. Inspired at a clash of arms, he loves it and pursues the enemy with the same ardor and resolution. He feels pleasure also in the chase and in torments. In the course, he is all fire. That was a description about horses, and for this one, you guys can try to guess what it is. He's a pretty little animal, is only half wild, and form its gentleness, docility, and even innocence of manners. It is almost entitled to an exemption from this class. Its common food consists of fruit, almonds, nuts, beech mass, and acorns. He's handsome, lively, alert, and industrious. His eyes are full of fire, has a good countenance, nervous body, and supple limbs. The beauty of his form is heightened by an spreading tail, resembling in a plume of feathers, which he raises above his head to form a kind of shade against the sun. He generally loves holding himself almost upright, using the four feet like hands in conveying food to his mouth. The graph is a description of squirrels, and his words describe them vividly. If this was me, I'll just say a small black, or whatever the color is, rodent that likes to eat acorns. You probably will still guess it's a squirrel, but just not as descriptive and in beautiful text. Buffon had disagreements on Carl Linnaeus' taxonomy rules, as we said in the last video. The reason is that Carl Linnaeus thought that God created everything perfectly and species will not change, and also the fact that Earth was created 4004 BC, told by Archbishop James Usher. 
Uh, Buffon tests himself that the Earth is actually 75,000 years old, and already based on the cooling rate of the rock. Well, Carl had all the rules based on this, but Buffon was more of a guy that tests things himself, and he made the suggestions that species may have both improved and degenerated after dispersing from the center of creation. For example, for a foot of a pig, they had lost some digits as time went on, because they barely use it. For example, the twos and the fives, and the only one they really use is the three and four for supporting their weight. And for dodo or doodoo birds, as some people call it the most stupid species in the world, there are no more of them left on Earth, but it was recorded that they disappeared based on the reason that people were killing them and they have long lost ability to move fast or fly, because they live peacefully away from any harm. And Buffon passed away in 1788, and the idea that species can improve and degenerate based on their environment that they live in, which led to a big debate in 1830. And I'll talk more about it in the next video. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. Also, hit the uh, notification button for future videos. Thank you. Someone wrote this song before, and I could tell you. From the four seven three six two five one to boot my mind at any